She said a weird thing to me recently. She said she wanted to wear a blindfold during sex. I thought, well, fine, on the one hand, you want to take away one of your senses in order to heighten the other four, in order to increase the erotic pleasure of lovemaking. Let's give that a go. Sounds fun. On the other hand, I was thinking, what you're really saying is, I will fuck you, but I'm going to have to cover my eyes. <laughs> Men propose on their knees. Do you know why that is? It's to get them used to asking for sex when they're married. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the weird reaction. Well done, you. Women like to dance with men because women instinctively know if they dance with a man, they'll be able to tell what he's like in the bedroom. And it is quite a good indicator. I tend to dance for about 30 seconds and have a bit of a cry. <laughs> Get the feeling you're laughing at me, not with me there, man. It's very cruel. I've read an article recently about British men's ultimate sexual fantasy. And it surprised me. The results of it surprised me. It was a proper survey. They asked 3,000 men their opinion. I'd like to do a little straw poll in here this evening because the results of this, I was shocked. Ultimate sexual fantasies. Has anyone got one they wouldn't mind admitting to? Jessica Alba. Jessica Alba. It's a specific person that you, that you would like to bone. Well, I happen to know Jessica Alba does an awful lot of work for charity. Maybe... <laughs> Any other ultimate sexual fantasy? Girlfriend. My girlfriend. Well, maybe we could double team her. <laughs> my girlfriend is your ultimate sexual fantasy. Yes, people see my girlfriend and they see me and they say, she's only going out with you because you're famous. And I say, but I am famous. <laughs> What's your point? <laughs> is, is that your girlfriend? That is my girlfriend. That's your girlfriend? <laughs> I'm not going to swap if that's okay. <laughs> Can I just clarify? You are a beautiful lady, no disrespect to you. <laughs> but he heckled, I had to put him down. And the only way to get to him was through you. <laughs> I like the way as well. I suggested your girlfriend wasn't good looking enough and you applauded. <laughs> Yeah, you'll be using those hands later on, won't you? <laughs> Any other ultimate sexual fancies? A Viking helmet. A Viking helmet? <laughs> what have you got? Two vaginas? <laughs> Good, lovely. Any other ultimate sexual fancies? Schoolgirl. Schoolgirl? <laughs> and then you've pointed at your man. <laughs> Yeah, I think we've got, a, we've got a special term for a schoolgirl fantasy now. We call it pedo. <laughs> Sorry, sir, do you like, what do you like? Schoolgirl teacher. Schoolgirl teacher? Schoolgirl, though, really. <laughs> yeah, no, because the specialist term for the schoolgirl unit, yeah, it's a, you, you are a pedo. <laughs> it's no, it's good. Look at the positive. You get to be on a list. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. Everyone in the neighbourhood knows where you live. That's convenient, isn't it? Do you make her dress up as a schoolgirl? She's done it. <laughs> She's done it. <laughs> Have her washed and brought to my room. <laughs> I'm joking. Don't wash her. Bestiality! Bestiality. <laughs> well, easy, easy. Let's just think this through. Because bestiality, a lot of people just write off as a terrible thing. Let's look at both sides. Let's say you fuck a cow, and that could happen. You sound like a nutter. No, let, let's imagine you fuck a cow. You haven't actually harmed the cow. Cows are fucking enormous. You're not going to trouble it with your tiny cock. But, but you know, but you've probably distressed the animal. Daisy's probably thinking, what the fuck is he up to? On the upside, though, you've had a whale of a time, and if you have a baby with a cow, it'll be a minotaur. It's like Bully from Bullseye. <laughs> Just putting it into terms he'll understand. Any other ultimate sexual fancies? An amputee. An amputee. <laughs> it's not Paul McCartney, is that a can't see? It's a bit weird, the Paul McCartney thing, isn't it? I mean, he's Paul McCartney. He's, a, he's a, a national treasure, a global icon. He was in The Beatles, and he couldn't find a woman with four working limbs. <laughs> That's who he had to make do. 
<laughs> people, uh, she actually, she accused him, I believe, of, of hitting her. Which is, um, do you think he hit her? <laughs> do, do you think he hit, do you think Paul McCartney hit Heather Mills? I, I don't think he did, but, I mean, if I'm honest, I would have. <laughs> no, I'm not advocating violence against women in any way, shape or form, but it'd be interesting to know whether she would spin round like a swing ball. <laughs> Whoa! And actually, to be honest, she accused him of hitting her with her false leg. <laughs> that is disgraceful, and that is a lie. I can, I can tell you why that is definitely a lie, because if you hit someone with a false leg, technically, that is a kick. The reason I mention this is because in this article it said that the most common ultimate sexual fantasy, ultimate sexual fantasy, remember, in the UK is to have two women at the same time. It got me thinking, well, I mean, I'm not saying it wouldn't be fun to have two women at the same time. It is. <laughs> Thank you, show business. <laughs> yes, I'll tell you what I'd be if I wasn't a comedian. A virgin. I just think if it's your ultimate sexual fantasy, you're only limited by your imagination. Two women at the same time is a bit lame. You can have anything you want. You could have a woman with 15 tits riding a unicorn across a rainbow. <laughs> Never mind, two women at the same time. I mean, at least, at the very least, go for three. Because <laughs> think about it, how much better would it be having sex with two beautiful, attractive women if you were safe in the knowledge all the while you were fucking them, there was another one outside washing the car? <laughs> that would make it just a little bit better, wouldn't it? I told my girlfriend my ultimate sexual fantasy was to have two women at the same time, and she agreed. But then she was livid when I told her she wasn't either of them. <laughs> she was going to be the one outside washing the car. <laughs> I did have a threesome once. This was many years ago, about eight, nine years ago. I was seeing this girl. It transpired she had a twin. So I asked. You don't ask, you don't get. I asked, I got. There's a lesson in life. <laughs> it was fucking brilliant. <laughs> One of the best experiences of my life, because if anything, a twin was better looking than her, and an all-round great guy. <laughs> yeah, you knew something was coming, but you didn't realise it was going to be her brother in her. <laughs> Are there people in from the West Country going, I don't really get it? Now, I love my job. I love telling jokes to people, but essentially what I do for a living, I'm a jester, I'm a clown, I'm a fool. Sometimes I want to be taken a bit more seriously, so I'd like to take a five-minute time out from telling you jokes, and I'd like to throw some ideas at you, some thoughts that I've had, ladies and gentlemen. But to help me with this, I'm going to bring on a trio of jazz musicians. What? <laughs> I am. Can I get some jazz musicians, please? Thanks very much. 